But for those of us here, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. as we join in our Advent liturgy. I invite you to either pay attention in the bulletin or on the words on the screen. We started, we started with hope. We pause on our journey for peace, but not one that we can find in rest or in silence. Or the peace. But a peace that comes from holy breath. We are as dry bones awaiting prophecy. We are in need of this peace that passes all else. couple announcements today from amongst the community. We're going to go with, you want to go first? We're going to have Ann Krauss come first and then Kathy Davis. Good morning. Special welcome to Megan Roebuck, who is now our office administrator. She started this past week. And a big thank you to Melissa Howard, who was with us and, and transitioned uh, Megan. So get in to meet her and uh, wish her all the best as the office administrator. Thank you. Progress. I knew I shouldn't have worn these snowflake earrings. <laughs> anyway, good morning, everyone. I'm Kathy Davis. And I am uh, on the Committee for Christian Education. I'm also a Sunday school teacher. And this morning after church, the Sunday school girls will be having a sale of Christmas cards, which they have made. There'll also be for sale some knit socks and other crafts. And the money raised, the girls want to put forward with World Vision to buy some farm animals for families. So if you, and we are also serving coffee and tea and some cookies. So if you'd like to come out after church and make some purchases, that would be great to support the Sunday school. Thank you. It is the first Sunday of the month, so it is also Pantry Sunday, and we thank all who continue to support this ministry of feeding people in our midst. If you um, forgot to bring something today, that's okay. Donations are actually accepted all through the month. You just need to bring them into the office uh, when the office is open. And a reminder that the office is open until three now. 
So if you're used to coming between three and four, you're going to have to shift your time slightly. There is a list of services coming up in the bulletin and um, next week is our last fun script opportunity before Christmas and the new year. So if you have gift cards that you still want to purchase, those last minute gifts, or just to get yourself covered for making donations to the church through December and January, spending on your day-to-day -day things, please bring your orders next week. The UCW Suites order date is coming up as well. So please telephone Donna Chauvin for more information and that is in the bulletin. Are there any other celebrations or announcements from our community today? Hearing none, let's move into our call to worship. From the valley of despair and death, from isolation and loneliness of exile, in the planning and preparing to celebrate, in the joy that this season brings. Come and see, come and know, Christ is near. Oh, Christ is near. Let us pray. Holy God, as the days grow shorter and the dark creeps in, we find ourselves unsettled. In the pressure we put on ourselves to be perfect, we wrestle with the reality that we often miss that mark. In the uncertainty of our world, we struggle to find comfort and sure footing. We need your peace. Peace that is beyond the end of conflict. A peace that blasts into our lives, calming our fears, turning down our anxieties allowing us to respond to the Christmas star shining in the darkness. Be that peace for us this day. This we pray in the name of the light of lights, Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace. Amen. Let us join in an old familiar hymn, There's a Voice in the Wilderness Calling. Mm -hmm.
Please be seated. It is our time for all ages. For those of us who are not so young, didn't mean to stare at all of you. But in comparison, apparently I should stare at this side of the room. <laughs> and those who are not so young, because the most youngest people are out this way. It's a time when we come to think about our theme. And this is our Advent journey. We haven't talked about these candles this year. And I don't know how many of us who are younger were here last year. But in front of the church now, there are four candles and our regular Christ candle. We don't light that Christ candle until Christmas Eve. That's part of the visual waiting and anticipation because it will be ablaze, just not quite yet. And we have these stops. These stops on the way to the Christ candle. Hope. We talked about hope a bit last week. And today is this peace one. Where do you feel most at peace? Does anybody want to share? Somebody said outdoors. I know Sharon might be at this organ. <laughs> She's shaking her head yes for those of you who can't see her. In the barn. At home? How about out here? Where are some of the places that you feel at peace? Whoa, that was a lot of people all at once. That was awesome. And I didn't, couldn't distinguish most of them. But um, I think I heard somebody say sanctuary. This is a very peaceful place. Not the only place that God reaches out and gives us peace. This Sunday is an important Sunday on our journey because the peace that we talk about in the church isn't an end to war, but it's that settling of ourselves that allows us to know that God is with us and God is guiding us. It's that still calm place that allows us to do things we never thought possible because God is with us. All of the places that we find peace and rest help, help us to connect with God's spirit. And so this week, if you can, I encourage you to take some time in that place where you feel most at peace. And if you can't physically get there, God has given us another amazing gift. It's our minds. We can picture and imagine being in that place. And wonderful thing is that scientists have shown us that when we picture and imagine and bring ourselves to that place in our minds, physically, we actually experience a similar peace if we were there in person. So this week, go to your peace place. Breathe deeply of the spirit of God that is there feeding you. so that you can face and continue our journey to Christ's coming and presence.
Amen. So let us invite our Sunday school to continue out to do their lessons and their preparations for the Christmas card sale today. And remember that they invite us all to join them in the hall for coffee where you have your mask, you take it off, take a slip and put it back on. And while they leave, we give thanks for the choir's gift to us this day. This week we hear from the book of Ezekiel. Now Ezekiel was writing about the same time as Jeremiah, but he was in the opposite situation. Unlike Jeremiah last week who was left behind in the exile, Ezekiel as priest and prophet was one of the people who was carried off and taken to Babylon. We hear is writing to a people, the people of Israel now. The hand of the Lord came upon me and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. And he said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, Oh, Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, 
Suddenly there was a noise, a rattling of bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and, and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them. The skin had covered them and there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesy, <laughs> whatever, and he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. And then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God for our scriptures. Let us pray. Holy one, you speak to us still. You prophesy to us. Allow us to hear you speaking in this scripture. Allow us to hear you speaking in these words. May all that is said resonate with your life. All that is false, let it slip aside. Give us a message for today. This we pray in the name of Christ, the firstborn of the dead, our Lord and our salvation. Amen. So how do you feel about dancing skeletons? Disney's Dancing Skeletons came out in 1929. The spooky dance, thought to be funny by many, is banned in our house by Mike. He is completely creeped out of, by them, right down to the core. I don't know what happened to him, but I can't even mention them without shivers running down his spine. In his defense, they are a little bit disturbing, but I think that's the point. Today's scripture also deals with skeletons. And if you actually take the time to picture the words of our scripture, it is kind of creepy. Jewish scholar, Amy Robertson noted that Ezekiel is not just overlooking a valley, which is often how I picture it. Ezekiel standing on the cliff, looking down on all the dry bones. But she says that it's more like the hand of God put Ezekiel right in the middle of those bones, as if he's scrambling over them to find a sure footing in this valley where dead bones shattered and sun bleached spread as far as the eye could see. Tales or remnants of a decimated army of another day. And if that isn't enough, 
to make you kind of feel a little anxious. There is that graphic telling about how the bones will shake and come back together. So much of our scripture is just a brief mention of events that happen, but Ezekiel takes a good chunk of time to talk about how the bones will be formed back into man. He calls us to imagine those bones all around Ezekiel shaking and coming together, and the sinews and the muscles, the blood starting to flow and skin being layered on. The imagery in our scripture is not for the faint of heart. And then think about Ezekiel standing there among these fully formed bodies and realizing they are not truly alive yet. that none of them are breathing. It's not a place I'd like to be. And then God says, call to the breath. Have it come and sweep from all four corners of the world. Reminiscent of creation, that breath that flowed over all and fill those bodies bring, bringing life. This is not the first time, nor will it be the last time that God brings life to the dead. Our God is doing this all the time literally and in scripture and figuratively in our own lives. These promise, this promise most fully revealed in the life, death and resurrection of Christ is incredibly comforting. As I face those places in my life that are death dealing, that seem hopeless. When I find myself asking, can these bones live? When Ezekiel is asked this question, I love his answer. Because the question itself begs a response of no. Biologically, these long dead bones cannot live. But he doesn't say that. Nor, as you would expect a prophet and priest to say he doesn't, neither does he enthusiastically express, yes, through your power, God, all things are possible. His answer. His answer speaks to the real struggle that was being faced. To this real experience of feeling like you're at the end not really knowing, but not willing to give up hope. Ezekiel answers, O oh Lord God, you know. O oh Lord God, you know. And he wasn't wrong. Only God knew for sure whether those bones could live. And when God says, prophesy, speak words that make absolutely no sense over these dry bones, Ezekiel does something of great faith. Even though he's not sure, he speaks the words that God gives him to say. He speaks the words.
I think this is an important thing for us to realize. Those bones do live. They come back together. But Ezekiel didn't have to do it himself. He didn't just had to step beyond being drawn into despair and hopelessness. He just had to let go of his knowing. and do what God asked him to do. He was not responsible for making those bones come together. Just for inviting God's spirit to do what God's spirit does. As we look at the challenges that face us, I think it's important for us too to remember that It is not our responsibility to bring life to each and every place that we face. But to be open to the possibility of God speaking and working in our midst. To risk listening for God's voice and saying the words and doing the things that might not make a hundred percent sense at the time. Can these bones live? This powerful story also begs another question and one that I've been pondering. You see the people who had long been dead It's expected that they had been fighting at war, came back to life, and then what? Have you thought about that before? Then what would they do? I think it should turn that slide one more time. We're going to go back to that original slide. John, can I get you to flick the slide one? So imagine all of a sudden you are present again. You had been fighting a war, but that war is no more. The time has changed, the place is different. Can these bones live? Yes, but they need to live in a different way. And I think that's one of the things that the scripture we often miss. The bones didn't come back to life and do exactly what those bones were doing the moment they died. The people had to face a new reality. The bones had to do something different. And there is great power in knowing that God was present there. Opening up new possibilities, not just for us, for them, but for this entire world. If we could risk handing our actions and our future over to God. If we can risk doing things a new way, God is present. And I wonder, in those places in your own life where you feel like there are dry bones, maybe it's a relationship that hasn't gone well. Maybe it's your own mental health struggles. Maybe, maybe the possibilities are endless. Maybe it is a health concern or a decision that you need to make about the future. 
but you feel worn out and tired and you don't know where you're going. Maybe it's just COVID fatigue. All of those places that are dry and barren and not living. When you call out to God asking, can these bones live? Is there a way out? God's message has been and always ha will be. I am the Lord of life. These bones can live. Just listen to where I'm calling you. Just listen to what I have to say. Just be willing to follow in my way. Thanks be to Christ, who gives us the breath of life. Thanks be to God, who gives us the Holy Spirit and the peace that passes understanding. Thanks be to Christ, who gives us the strength that when we cry out, when we ask for help, our bones can and will be reanimated. And that in that new space, God is still present, holding us and guiding us to the dawn. Amen. Let us join in our hymn of response, O Breath of Life. Voices United, 202, sung to a different tune. In this busy season, our most important preparations will be here in our hearts. When we make way for the Holy Spirit to come into our lives, when we prepare the way for the Lord. In the midst of our preparations, as we bring our gifts to share, so that God's love will shine brightly through this ministry of this church and in our lives as well. And so, We've come to the moment where we lift up our gifts to God. So let us pray together. Take the gifts we offer, gifts of time, gifts of our skill, gifts of our wallet. Take these gifts and let them be animated through your spirit 
that we may proclaim new life you offer and love of those who are in need. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. O holy breath that sweeps around this world and has since the dawn of creation, we pray and invite you to come and be with us. We need your love, your spirit, your spark. We need you to fan the flames of our hearts for this time and this place, this life can cause our embers to grow cold. Rejuvenate us with your wind, O oh Lord. Be with your people in all the four corners of this world. Breathe your spirit to the north and the south and the east and the west and wrap us in your care. For so much troubles our souls. So much troubles our lives. We pray and uphold all those who are facing the realities, some for the first time, some for a renewed time of COVID in our midst. We pray for your spirit to open hearts of generosity, to allow for the sharing of the gift of vaccines with the entire world so that maybe we can put this pandemic to rest. Bless that endeavor, O oh God, we pray, for we are tired, tired of this time. We pray, we pray for peace in the households of this world. Where domestic violence is experienced, we pray for strength to leave, to seek help, to be safe. In those places where tempers flare and frustrations come easy, we pray for, well, we pray for your peace. for helping people to see things in different ways and to take a deep breath before reacting. We pray, oh God, for all the troubled hearts, those who are struggling with health conditions, those who have loved ones who are ill and injured, those who are walking through personal struggles and challenges. We pray for the strength that your peace brings. Holy one. As the nights get colder and the weather gets more in climate, we pray for those who are seeking the security and the peace of shelter. We pray for those who are on the streets, those who are surfing from house to house, those who are in our shelters. Holy one. Each of us has our own joys and sorrows. And so we open our hearts to you, praying in silence or out loud as the Spirit moves us. And we lift these prayers to you.
we give thanks, O oh God, that the Spirit not only animates dry and dead bones, but that it prays for us when our hearts are too heavy or the words do not come. And so we wrap the prayers said aloud and in our hearts, we wrap them up in the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And let us join together in our closing hymn in the bleak midwinter, number 55 in Voices United. into the world that God so loves. Go into the world speaking the words that God gives you to speak, ready to be amazed and astounded. For the winds of the Spirit are stirring and starting to move, and the dry bones are beginning to rattle. Go knowing that the Spirit goes before you and is already behind you, drawing you into the heart of God and into the presence of our Savior. Amen.